in the past few weeks, we have seen the resurgence of Trayvon Bromel, previously one of the greatest sprinters on the world stage. On July 4th at the showdown in O-Town down in Florida, he ran a time of 10.04 seconds in the 100 meters. A huge shock for anyone who has been following his career and knows the injuries he has been struggling with for the past few years. He noted that he recently moved from Texas where he was training at his alma mater of Baylor University and is now back in his home state of Florida, training under coach Raina Ryder with a group that includes some high quality names such as Andre DeGrasse, Omar McLeod, Christian Taylor, and others. A few weeks after that first 100 meter run, he came back on July 24th and blew everyone in the track and field world away. He dropped a 100 meter time of 9.90 seconds, beating the likes of Noah Lyles, Divine Oduduru, and some other guys. So at only his second race back this summer, he sent a message to the track and field world that he is back and ready to challenge for a spot on the US Olympic team. But what are his chances of not only making it to the Olympics, but also meddling at those Olympics? Looking back at some of his career highlights, Bromel was a high school star, notably running a wind-aided 9.99 seconds in the 100 meters in 2013. His time in the NCAA was no different. In just his freshman year in 2014, Bromel ran a legal 9.97 seconds to win the NCAA title at 100 meters. The following year was even more impactful and saw him run sub-10 legally on five occasions, highlighted by a personal best of 9.84 seconds in the heats of the 2015 USA Championships. He eventually earned a bronze medal at the Beijing World Championships that year, tying with Andre de Grasse, who had actually beat him at the NCAA Championships back in June. But one thing I will never forget is the 100 meter heats in Beijing where Bromel ran 9.91 seconds with some of the most impeccable form and efficiency and relaxation of anyone at the entire championships. Yes, including Usain Bolt and Michael Johnson definitely agrees Trayvon with me. Bromel. Trayvon Bromel, young American sprinter. This is a lesson in technique, which is amazing given that he just turned 20 years old. We can't forget about his indoor accolades though. Those who remember the 2015 indoor NCAA championships, Bromel ran the 200 meters in 20.23 seconds in just the heat, which was absolutely insane at the time. But then he improved it in the finals to 20.19 seconds. That made him the number two NCAA athlete of all time back in 2015. Then just a year later at the 2016 World Indoor Championships, despite Asafa Powell running 6.44 seconds in the heats and semifinals of the 60 meters, Bromel got the win in the final, earning world indoor gold in the 60 meter dash. Now, 2016 turned out to be where things started to go south for Bromel. He had a very limited spring schedule, only running five races between April and June, and then picked up an Achilles injury in mid-June. He came back, though, for an amazing campaign at the U.S. Olympic trials, running 9.94, 9.86, and 9.84, earning a spot on the U.S. Olympic team to Rio de Janeiro. He chose to take that summer off to heal his Achilles, unfortunately didn't run through the summer, but he came back at the Olympic Games and things unfortunately didn't go in his favor. He made it through the rounds to the final, but finished in last place in 10.06 seconds. Between 2017 and 2019, Bromel ran just four individual races, once in 2017, none in 2018, and three in 2019, the last of which he actually pulled up injured in that race. But now Bromel is back, new coach, new training group, and his health seems to be on the right track. So what are his chances of not just making the US team, not just meddling, but actually potentially winning Olympic 100 meter gold? Well, let's take a look. First off, making the US team, his personal best of 9.84, which he has run twice in his career, has only been bettered by two other active Americans since 2015, Christian Coleman and Justin Gatlin. Aside from them, Noah Lyles, Michael Norman, Ronnie Baker, and Mike Rogers have all run sub 9.90 seconds in the past few years. Then you also have guys like Christopher Belcher, Craven Gillespie, Marvin Bracey, who are all in the conversation for that 100 meter team. So first, let's take out Belcher, Gillespie, and Bracey since they are much less experienced than the other guys in the 100 meter dash. I'm also going to take out Michael Norman since it's very likely, if not certain, that he will focus on the 400 meters at the Olympic Games. Now let's remove Mike Rogers who, although extremely consistent, has only made one US 100 meter team in the past four years and is more of a mainstay on the 4x100 meter relay. 
Finally, Ronnie Baker. He is also on the comeback from injury. He's run very fast in the past, but he has never made a U.S. team yet, and we'll need to see a little bit more from him before placing him in the top three of the 100 meters. That leaves us with Gatlin, Lyles, Coleman, and Bramell. Now, I personally think that you could pick any of these four, and that would be a very realistic team. Lyles and Coleman are young and consistent, while Gatlin is a little bit older, but very experienced and very consistent. You can also factor in that Coleman is potentially facing a ban and might not be able to compete at the Olympics. But aside from that, I'll just leave it at these four guys for now without picking a solid top three. Let me know in the comments below who you think will be the top three to make the U.S. Olympic team. Now, let's say Bromel makes it to the Olympic Games. Who stands in his way of Olympic gold? Aside from the Americans, there are tons of other guys around the world who will put up a challenge for Bromel. Now, again, since 2015, only Coleman, Gatlin, and Usain Bolt have run faster than Bromel's personal best. Of course, though, Bolt has since retired, so who else will he go up against? First, Andre DeGrasse from Canada, Bromel's new training partner. DeGrasse has run 9.90 seconds and has bronze medals from 2015. 15, 16, and 2019 just last year, so he is definitely in clear contention for another medal. We have South African Akani Simbine, who has been very consistent in the 100 meters. He got 4th place in 2019, as well as 5th place in 2017 and 2016. He seems primed to improve his personal best of 9.89 seconds, so will definitely be one in contention. We also have Nigeria's Divine Oduduru. He had a legendary NCAA career at Texas Tech, running a personal best of 9.86 seconds last year. Though he didn't compete in the 100 meters in Doha, he will definitely be a factor come the Olympics. We can't forget about Johan Blake from Jamaica. Now he is far from his prime from back in 2011 and 2012, but he has finished very high up in the past few championships. In 2016, 2017, and 2019, he finished 4th, 4th, and 5th respectively. So he's just always outside and on the cusp of winning a medal. Now there are tons of other guys to look out for. Zarnell Hughes from Great Britain, Jimmy Vico from France, Arthur Cisse from Ivory Coast, and many, many others. So where does Bramel stand? In my opinion, he is a clear medal threat at the Olympics. If the Olympic Games happen tomorrow, I think he would at least get a silver medal. I think his biggest challenge will come from the Americans in Coleman and Lyles. If Coleman isn't there because of the potential ban, then Lyles and maybe Gatlin will be his biggest competitors. So gold is definitely not a foregone conclusion, but it's not too much of a reach and definitely in the realm of possibility, especially considering the rest of the world hasn't really stepped things up since the Bolt era ended. So those are just my thoughts, but regardless of what happens, it's great to see Bromel back healthy and running fast. So go in the comments below and let me know if you think Trayvon Bromel will be able to make the Olympic team, win a medal at the Olympics, and if you think he can even get the 100 meter gold medal in Tokyo. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.